Professor Matt, would you uh, share a little bit of your thoughts with us Thank you. today? Thank you, Professor. Appreciate it. Um, hard to describe the honor of being up here. Uh, between Professor Jim, the Black Belts, Flavio, Felipe, uh, very, very big shoes to fill. Um, 2008 was a really big year for me. Uh, within a month, I started training jiu-jitsu and I married the best person I've ever met. A little later that year, I became a business owner with one of my best friends, who just so happens to be my father, and started an incredible journey with the intersection of those three things. And I, I thought about today, and I, I thought I'd have a unique opportunity to kind of share some of the things that I've learned along that journey. I think twofold to number one, thank the people who have sacrificed to make this thing a reality. And number two, for the people who are here, give you a chance to maybe learn something a little earlier or a little easier than I did. Um, I heard pretty early after I got on the mats, um, Jiu Jitsu saved my life. And as much as I liked Jiu Jitsu at the time, I remember thinking to myself, look, it's a little bit over the top, that seems like kind of an exaggeration. I mean, I, I love this thing too, but how can Jiu Jitsu really save a life? And I learned a little bit about the Gracie family. I learned a little bit about what life was like in Rio about what life was like in Baja and other places in Brazil, I started to understand how the mats became a place for people to come and find home away from violence, away from loneliness, how it was an opportunity to breathe life into continuing a legacy outside of Brazil, in the United States, in Western Europe. And for all too many of those people, it was actually very easy to see how jiu-jitsu saved their life. And I remember being a little bit jealous at the time thinking, what a profound impact that has had on people, and how could I possibly seek to get something like that? I was thirsty for it, but I didn't think it was gonna happen. And slowly, like Jiu Jitsu does, I, I began to reduce my ignorance. Uh, a couple years later, um, probably the first lesson that I learned in a big way, first huge lesson was, it was on the end of a uh, private lesson with Flavio, and uh, I learned some stuff about open guard. I, my guard was getting past every single class and he taught me a couple things that immediately create a foundation that still exists in my guard. But like typically happens at the end of a private session, we, we sparred for a while after. And I remember getting done and uh, Flavio said to me, he's like, you know, Matt, I gotta tell you, you have a really good ability to attack from pretty much any position. And it's hard to describe the, the amount of pride and the surge of ego that I felt from having that type of, of comment from him. And it really wasn't until I became a black belt, until I became a, an instructor, that I recognized that what I perceived was happening that day was something much different than what actually happened that day. Uh, Dale Carnegie wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People. One of my favorite chapters in that book is Give, a people, give people a reputation to live up to. Uh, looking back, I can only imagine, it's, it's funny, you and I have never talked about this, but I can only imagine that what Flavio was actually thinking during the class was, God, I just taught you all this stuff, I'm sparring with you, trying to give you a chance to reinforce it, and you're just spazzing out, trying to see <laughs> and, and imagine the delta between if he'd have actually shared that and what happened. On the heels of that day, I, I liked Jiu Jitsu a lot before then, but on the heels of that day, I saw someone who I respected that much believe in me in a way where I was going to become something in Jiu Jitsu. I was going to fulfill that incredible vision that he was sharing with me for what I was capable of. And if you look at my game now, I, I attack in weird positions. It's, it's not shocking that that's the case, but that, that was the first major thing. And it, it really hints on another uh, concept uh, on the topic of leadership, which is probably best captured by uh, the Zen master Lao Tzu when he said, leadership is best, a leader is best, when people barely know he exists. When his work is done, his aim complete, people will say, we did it ourselves. This hints at a really profound truth, which is we don't like to do things for other people's reasons. We like to do them for ourselves. I've seen in Flavio and in so many other people, the knowledge to tell people, look, just do it this way and you'll be successful. 
That hasn't been the way that he's done. That hasn't been the way that has been mentored in here. The way that's been mentored has been asking a question, asking another question, still not getting it. I'm asking another question. And finally, somebody gets the right answer. And the difference there is, all of a sudden now, it's my genius. It's my understanding. Now I love it. Now I'm passionate about it. Now I want to see it manifest. Now I want to share it with other people. And in both of those veins, there's been a profound impact. So thank you for that. Um, I had so many things I could have shared today. And in the interest of time, I'll, I'll skip to the last one. Um, if, you're, if you're hungry for more, I, I teach at noon on Mondays. And be... <laughs> um, but the last one was on the topic of mastery. Um, and, and first, a caution to uh, the new black belts. Um, mastery is not a trophy. The, uh, the belt that you have, while a great accomplishment, is not something to lean on. Uh, similar to marriage, it's a responsibility. It, it's something that you have to choose uh, every single day. Um, my favorite quote on mastery was actually something that was first put on my radar by Brett Houck. I don't know if he's here, but uh, similar to Felipe, uh, it's an interesting thing to be uh, be mentored by somebody, but big fan of that guy as well. <clears throat> but the quote uh, from Lawrence Persall Jacks, who was a, a dean at a, a small writing school outside of Cambridge in England, was the master in the art of living makes little distinction between his work and his play, his labor and his leisure, his recreation and his education, his love and his religion. He merely pursues his vision of excellence and leaves it to others to determine whether or not he is working or playing. To him, he is always doing both. When I heard that the first time, I wanted so badly to apply it to myself. Uh, and I think there were ways, there were ways where I could, but it really only took me a couple of moments to recognize that somebody much more deserving were the two people that I knew best on the mats. Uh, firstly, Felipe. Um, anybody who has spent any time around the school can so plainly see that there is virtually no difference between the Felipe who is Skyping with another school to tell them how to work a curriculum, sparring with a student, sweeping the mats, teaching a kid's class. The version of this human that you get never changes which is impressive enough. Even more so is the fact that the version that you get is always one that is making you smile. I would be hard pressed to paint a picture of life mastery better than the mentor that I see in Felipe. It is a phenomenal example for all of us and a responsibility and a duty that I, I hope we continue to work toward. Beyond that, you don't have to cry, uh, you don't have to not cry. I thought about a couple of examples that would apply to Flavio on this, and, and one hit me uh, as I was thinking about uh, the speech today this morning that I, I think is going to best describe um, this concept of mastery. Um, many of you have probably seen people at tournaments when they win. Something unique happens when most people do. Um, there is beating on the chest, there is screaming, there is arms up and exultation, and then there is something else that happens. There is a stark contrast between what you see from so many world champions and what you see from somebody like Flavio. I think I saw this in a way that I, I loved most after a tournament last year. I'm not sure which one it was. But uh, after just winning, uh, and, and tons of GB people cheering for him. Um, it was much different. He turned around, fixed his gi, placed his hand over his chest, and smiled as if to say, that was hard. That was fun. It's time to get back to work. That's exactly the picture of mastery. That, that exists on the mats and that has been mentored by you, Professor, and it has had a profound impact on me and many other people. Um, and in closing here, the path of an entrepreneur is a difficult one. It takes
courage to begin. It takes discipline to survive. But it takes love to thrive. When I look at you two guys and the others who have followed in your footsteps, I'm just so thankful for the courage to begin what exists here today. I'm so thankful for the discipline to survive the difficult times of which I knew there were many, and I am heartened by the love that has been mentored. I was not in danger of dying. Jiu-Jitsu did not save my life. I was very much in danger of being a mediocre business owner and being a mediocre husband and being a mediocre father. And while I have much to learn, I have grown so much under your loving care. Your brothers and sisters in arms, I think, will join me when we say, thank you for the sacrifice. Keep it up. We are watching. We are following. Yeah.